<laughs> oh, yes. It's amazing. After worship, the presence of God comes. Everybody looks different. Either that or there's a cloud and I can't see you. you know. <laughs> Welcome to Tuesday Night Live. <laughs> Where the word of God is worth the drive. <laughs> Thank you, Master. See, in God's presence, you get refreshed, not refleshed. Amen? That's why you got to cross over, man. Crossing over. 1 Peter chapter 4. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Woo. Anybody get touched? <laughs> yeah, it was a dumb question. Hallelujah. Welcome to the Kingdom of God Tuesday night training session as a warrior of the Most High. Amen? You know, more and more strategies, strategies are being released. More and more things are happening. People don't really know what's going on behind the closed door, but that's okay. Your, our focus is to trust, rest, and wait. And knowing that God is going to have the last say, but people are being arrested. People just don't know about it yet. You know, the media's not going to tell you anything. They'll be arrested. When you know they get arrested, you know things are really happening. Amen? When the, when the uh, military takes over the media, you know things are really happening. It's coming. Hallelujah. You know, but for me and you, we've got we've to come to that place always where wanting to maintain a new life. Amen? We want not only the new life, but we want to maintain that new life. So that means that in our life, you're going to have things that come to you that you're going to need to throw off shrug off things from the past and things even from that have been that the enemy's been bringing across your path you know we've got to have the discernment now and wisdom not to agree with anything that would come against our destiny amen uh you know we we got a saying let go and let god but so many people can't let go there are two everybody gets too emotionally attached listen every day i must sever myself from all emotional attachments with everything my family my wife children everyone everything why? Because you're to be his. If you're still emotionally attached to anything, you're not his. Why? Then God restores it every day. See, every day is a brand new day for me and you. You went to sleep, you woke up, it's brand new. BC, it took seven days to get a new one. Hello, but today, praise God, 24 hours, I'm new. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The problem is what I got out when I realized after seven days I went back to the old again, you know, and tried to do it again. But it never worked until Jesus gave me a new life. But the question always was not that I wanted to get off drugs and alcohol, but did I want a new life? Did I want a new life? Did I want a new life? Now, you got to ask yourself, do you still want a new life? This is how we grow. Amen. Everything that you and I are going through is a grow through. Amen? We are growing through it. Everyone say, growing through it. We're going to expose some of the it's tonight. Hallelujah. 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 12. Let's speak it. Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial which is going to try you as though some strange thing has happened to you. But rejoice in the event that you partake of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. If you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you, for the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. On their part he's blasphemed, but on your part he's glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer or a thief or an evildoer, as a busybody in other people's matters. And if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this matter. For the time has come for judgment to begin at the house of God, and if it begins with us first, 
what will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God? Now, if the righteous one is scarcely saved, where will be the ungodly and the sinner appear? Therefore, let those who suffer according to the will of God commit their souls to him in doing good as to a faithful creator. In other words, you and I are going to have strange afflictions. Amen? These are called challenges. Why? So you and I can partake of Christ's sufferings. There's these it's. In other words, we are grow, growing. Amen? We are growing through it. If you're growing through it, it means you're going to go through it. But we must begin to take things to grow through it, these challenges. How about our mistakes? How about our failures? You know, all of that's going to work to the good. No matter what. If you lie it, if you're cooperating, it's going to all work to the good. Everything's going to work to the good, no matter what you're going through. But we've got to grow through it. So we must let everything be a part of growing. Amen? In other words, we don't want to make the same mistakes. But you know, we know the patterns that lead to those mistakes. So we don't want to, when you sense that pattern start to develop, you don't continue with it and hope that that mistake ain't gonna re, is going to go away. It's going to repeat itself. Amen? Anybody ever been disappointed? Amen? What do you think people want to commit suicide for? Because they can't stand what they've done. Amen? Think about it. They're more, more frustrated with themselves. But the, the, the bottom line is that people are not recognizing that the influence is coming from the unseen realm. That's the problem. In other words, like, who told me that? Amen? Where'd you come from? Why am I thinking that way? See, there's got to be a monitoring session all the time for me and you. That's a self-examination. Why do I do what I do? Well, who told me what to do? Am I being led by the spirit or am I being led by the carnal or the old man or the demon? And James chapter 1. Welcome to the earth where strange afflictions are constant. We will be challenged. We will be tempted. We will make mistakes and we will fail sometimes. But it's not over. Amen. We're going to grow through it. Now, these it's are failures. They are mistakes. Amen? These are it's. They are disappointments. They are trials. They are tribulations. They are these things. In verse 2, James 1, verse 2, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Knowing that the what? Testing of your faith produces patience or endurance. So as you're going, growing through these, you're going to become what? Stronger. Remember we talked about every resistance brings more strength. But let patience, let endurance have its what? Perfect work. There's got to be a perfect work. How is it going to be perfect? By you continuing to grow through it. That you may be what? Perfect and complete and lacking nothing. Do you understand that God doesn't want you to lack anything? He's trying to get us into a position, not only mentally, spiritually, but physically, where we know that nothing can be withheld for us from Him. That we know that it's all going to work to the good. That we know these things. That the promises of God are faithful and true. He wants to get us to a place where we're no longer looking Outside, but heaven-bound. Too many people rely on outside and not heaven-bound. Amen? Oh, hallelujah, let's go a little further. He says here, if any of you lacks wisdom. Now, wait a minute. So he's saying right now, man, you're lacking wisdom. What does wisdom do? Tells you what to do. Wisdom does what? Tells you what? What's understanding? Tells you how to do it. So he said, listen, if you lack wisdom and, and, and what to do, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. Do you ask for wisdom every day? Well, you need to. But let him ask in what? Faith, in other words, knowing that you are receiving it. With no doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose he will receive anything from the Lord. He is double-minded man, unstable in all of his 
ways. So God is trying to get us from a place of any area of our life where there's an instability. Amen? Where there's a, a mistrust or misleading in something. That you're leaning on something that is not correct. If you're hoping in something that's not correct. If you're waiting on something that's not correct. Amen? See, you and I, we don't go there. We know he's faithful no matter what. And it doesn't mean he's... Look, God is the God who restores. Amen? But there are things he's not going to restore. And you must trust him to take care of the will, his will for us, and not ours. Does everybody get it? Listen, too many people are caught up in so much emotion, it's ridiculous. Too many emotional decisions, too many emotional uh, choices, purchases, too much emotion. And it's bringing destruction and division. How many people get offended so easy? Because they're emotionally involved. Listen, our emotion now is peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Ghost. Amen? That's what it is. We, he must be number one no matter what in everything that you and I do. He is priority no matter what. Is everybody okay? So we are counted it all joy and all various challenges. In other words, <laughs> when we cry for help, it's a rescue. Amen? It's a rescue for a new start. Fresh challenge to grow through it. So what God does is when you ask for help, he's going to rescue you. Amen? He's going to make a way. And then he's going to, you're going to go get stronger, and you're going to get another fresh challenge. Why? So you can grow through it to grow. Without challenges, there's no growth. So many people are trying to avoid challenges. Amen? Does everybody understand that? They don't want challenges. They, they'd rather run from them. Let me tell you, God wants to know if you're willing to go the extra mile or not. He wants to know whether you're using him. If you're using him, he can't use you. Hello. <laughs> Fresh challenges to grow through it. The it's of the unseen attacks, emotional disappointments, and shame of failure. The it's to grow if willing to cooperate and learn. What are we supposed to be learning? <laughs> In other words, remember when you first started to learn how to drive and you still were a little shaky on the gas pedal and the brake? And you got behind somebody too close and you hit the gas instead of the brake and poof. You know, you had to go through a few failures so that you finally, then you paid more attention to it. Let me share with you, failures and disappointments are to bring attention to something. God is trying to get our attention, what? To correct something, to fix something. Remember, your trials and tribulations also expose your enemies and your flaws. You know, uh, learning through our mistakes and growing. Listen, to repeat the same mistakes... As again, we talked about because of the same pattern that leads to the it, it's insanity. It's nuts. I mean, I feed my squirrel nuts and they're gone. But anyways, it's crazy for us to continue to on that same path. Think about that. To continue on that same path knowing it's going to result in a failure is crazy. Now, for you and I as a believer, that's, there's no excuse. When we were not believers, the enemy had control over us. But once we've learned the truth, there's no excuse for not having freedom. Amen? You know, just same thing with addiction. In, the, uh, I, I, in my addicted life, I needed a new life. Not the same friends. So for me to go back into the same pattern with the same associations and same things and even watching the same programs and everything else and that was a part of the same pattern of addiction life, 
It would keep me right back in addiction. I had to get out. For me to think that I can get free from a, a addiction and go back into that same pattern of associates of people, places, and things was insanity if I thought I was going to be free. Amen? Does everybody understand? You are, you know, we, we either use failure or you can, you can either use failure Amen? Excuse failure. It can either, you can get to a place where you're either going to give up or you're going to grow up. Amen? 2 Corinthians 4. Let me share this with you, which is vitally important. Life is a process of growing through series of failures that shapes your ability to succeed. I'll say it again. Life <laughs> is a process of growing through series of failures. Why? That, because that's what shapes your ability to succeed. You will, failures is also mistakes. For me and you, a failure is not being able to complete something or whatever. Amen? So there's reasons why we fall into these places. Why? Because it's shaping our way for success. It's shaping me and you. The Word tells us that we are being transformed into the image and likeness of Christ. 2 Corinthians 4.16. Let's speak it. Oh, yes. Therefore, we do not what? We don't lose heart. We don't give up. Even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us. It's what? It's for working for us. I far more exceeding the eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are what? Eternal. So we don't lose heart, but we grow through it. But you must expose your it. Amen? Matthew 16. Hallelujah. Matthew 16. Verse 13, Matthew 16, 13. Let's speak it. When Jesus came into Caesarea, or region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? So they said, some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, others Jeremiah. Or one of the prophets, but he said to them, but who do you say that I am? Which is vital. Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said to him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. This is called revelation. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. He was never saying Peter was going to be the Pope. Amen. He used the word Peter as a rock, meaning the anointing of God. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he commanded his disciples that they should tell no one that he was Jesus the Christ. From that time, Jesus began to show to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and do what? suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised the third day. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be it from you, Lord. This shall not happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an offense to me, for you are not mindful of the things of God. Do you hear this? You are not mindful of the things of God. You are not mindful of the things of God. What did he call him? Satan. See, when people lose sight of the things of God, they fall into another area of deception. 
He said, but you are mindful, you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of man. Then Jesus, of course, said to his disciples, anyone who wants to desire to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and do what? And to follow. Now, I want you to understand something very powerful, because here, Peter gets a great revelation from the Father. The next thing you know, he's trying to protect Jesus. And then Jesus turns around and rebukes him, calls him Satan. Hello? Does everybody get it? But you know what? Peter didn't stop. I mean, for me and you, that would have been a fit. Come on, you imagine Jesus saying, get behind me, Satan, do you? Yo! Forgive me, you know? <laughs> I'm just trying to protect you. Like, you need protection. You're God, and I'm not. Hello, what? Hallelujah. Now, you got to remember, remember, Jesus was getting ready to go. They were coming, to, coming after him, and, and Peter was all boastful. Yes, Lord, I'm going to protect you. And Jesus turns around and says, yo, man, you know what? You're going to deny me three times, and a rooster's going to crow. No way. No way that's going to happen, Lord. <laughs> Now, let's go to Matthew 26. Yeah, why not? Matthew 26. Hallelujah. Six, verse 69. Matthew 26, 69. Now Peter sat outside in the, in the courtyard, and a servant girl came to him saying, You also were with Jesus of Galilee. But he denied it before them and saying, I do not know what you're saying. And when he had gone out into the gateway, another girl saw him saying to those who were there, This fellow is also with Jesus of Nazareth. But again he denied with an oath, I do not know the man. And a little later, those who stood by came up and said to Peter, Surely you also are one of them, for you preach, you, you, you preach, be, your preach, your speech betrays you. Shoot Arabakia. Then he began to curse and swear. Oh, he got in the flesh because he got caught. Hmm. I do not know the man. Immediately a rooster crowed. And Peter remembered the word of Jesus who had said to him, and before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. So he went out and what? Wept bitterly. I mean, you talk about failure. Amen. John 21. Judas hung himself. Peter grew through it. John 21, verse 14. Is everybody there? This is now the third time Jesus showed himself to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. So when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? And he said to him, yes, Lord, you know I love you. He said to him, feed my lambs. He said to him again a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? He's talking to Peter, right? Peter denied him three times. Jesus reassures him three times. He's covering it. He said to him, do you love me? Do you, and he said, yes, you know I love you. Tend my sheep. Then he said to him again third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? And Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep most assuredly. I say to you, when you were younger, you girded yourself and walked where you wished. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and another will guide, gird you and you will carry you which 
you do not wish, where you do not wish. Again, Peter's confession of devotion, because look at what uh, finally Jesus said in verse 19. Then he spoke, signifying by what death he would glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said to him, what? Follow me. So if anyone should have ran away from Jesus and jumped off a cliff because of failure, it would have been Peter. I mean, think about it, you know. But what did he do? No, he didn't. He grew through it. He grew through it. Amen? And so you and I must continue to grow through it no matter what's going on. Listen, people are, you know how many people are disappointed because the president, Donald Trump, is not still in office yet? People are freaked out about it. They're calling all these prophets liars and whatever. Believe me, he will, he's, 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 he's still the president, you know. I don't know if you know it or not, but he never uh, conceded to giving up his presidency. Listen, on President's Day, Biden had no par, par, party or parade. Donald Trump did. They were praising him as the president. They were all on the streets glorifying God and everything. It's Donald Trump as president. Biden wasn't even around. He went back to his basement, I think. He had to regroup, get some counsel. Psychiatric. First Peter chapter 1. Hallelujah. First Pete chapter 1, verse 3. We are going to grow through it, but you must expose your its. Amen? Is heaviness in it? Oppression in it? Disappointments in it? Discouragements in it? There's a lot of it's out there. They're itites. It's a whole tribe of itites. Verse 3. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to his abundant mercy, has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you've been grieved by various trials. Oh, those it's. That the what? The genuineness of your faith being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it, it is tested by fire, may be found to the praise and honor and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen you love, though now you do not see him, yet believing you rejoice with joy inexpressibly and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Powerful. We are being tested, genuineness. And you know, it's not just genuineness of your faith. It's if you're genuine. Are you real? You know, are you real with God? Is your life real? Are you just playing it? Are you doing time on earth and hoping to get home? Is your intentions correct? Are your motives correct before God? Is it all about you and what you want? Or are you dead yet to yourself? See, if you haven't reached a level of denying yourself, some people never will reach it. They won't. They'll continue to fall back in that same routine that leads them to destruction. Why? Because there are things that interfere with people. Self, pride, greed, all of these other it's. It's about you. Amen? All of these things that constantly are leading, misleading people. One of the things that really, what does the word say? What is the great rudder? Our tongue. The biggest rudder, our tongue, misleads us in different places. Why? Out of the mouth speaks the heart. You can't fake it in God. Romans 8.
Romans 8, 28. We are growing, not going, growing, amen, through it. Because if you're not growing through it, you ain't going through it. Verse 28, and we know that all things work together for the good to those who love God. Do you love him? He says, if you love me, you'll obey me. To those who are called according to his purpose, for whom for whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. Whom he justified, these he also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If what? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him for us all. How shall we not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. Hey, let me tell you, if you got Jesus praying on your behalf, you can't lose. As long as you're in line. Who shall separate us from the love of God? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. <laughs> we are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all of these things, all of these things, these things are called its. All of these its, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hallelujah. 1 Peter 2. Verse 1. Therefore laying aside all malice, all deceit, all hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking, as newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word that you may what? That you may what? Grow. Thereby. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious, coming to him as a living stone, rejected indeed by men. Anybody been rejected by men here? Hallelujah. But chosen by God and precious. You're chosen by God and precious. You also are living stones, are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Therefore, it is also counted in the scripture, contained in the scripture. Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect precious, and he who believes on him will by no means be put to shame. Therefore, to you who believe, he's precious, but those who are disobedient, the stone which the builders rejected has become a chief cornerstone and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble being disobedient to the word to which they were also appointed. Ephesians 4. Oh, it's good to hear the pages turning out Tuesday night. Ephesians 4, verse 11. Everything is an opportunity to grow. The problem is people get stuck in the challenges and the opportunities, not realizing that it's an opportunity. They get so caught up. And then they, people, listen, when emotional attacks come, people have a tendency to want to blame. The blame game. Nobody wins the blame game, only the devil. You can guarantee in the blame game there's always failure. And we call that butt ministry, right? Ephesians 4, verse 11.
And Jesus himself gave some to be what? Apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. For the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God. To a what? Perfect man. Un uh, that means stable, immovable. To the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, the anointing. That we should no longer be children. Tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth in love. May what? Grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies, according to the effect of working by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. This I say, therefore, in testifying the Lord, that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in fertility of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God, being alienated from the life of God. That's what the enemy tries to do. Because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness to work all uncleanness with greediness. He said, but you've not so learned Christ. You haven't learned it. Why? Because they haven't <laughs> allowed the mistakes to grow them. Amen? In Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews chapter 5. You know, in the areas of mistakes and failures and disappointments, there's an emotional effect in every one of them. In fact, in that, that's where oppression comes. That's where heaviness comes. You, people can get disappointed. You know, I mean, I mean we're, all, we're rough on ourselves. I mean, as a Christian, we're rough on ourselves. Why? Because we desire to be perfect before God. Because we want to be pleasing to Him. We hate making mistakes. If you don't hate making mistakes, there's something wrong with you. Hello? We don't, we, we don't want to live, live a life of God that displeases God. If you don't care, there's something wrong with you. That means you're going down that same path that leads to destruction again. But in this, we're rough on ourselves. You know, you got to make yourself do things that are pleasing to God. There's times God isn't going, he doesn't force you to do anything. You got to force yourself to. You got to take your flesh, throw it right in the presence of God. Amen. Sometimes you got to take your head and stick your sock in its mouth. <laughs> Whatever you got to do. Get it in God's presence. You know, God, here it is. If you're not getting God's attention, you're getting the devil's. I want to say that again. If you're not getting God's attention, you're getting the devil's attention. Amen? Hebrew 5.5. 5. And sin doesn't get God's attention. Repentance does. <laughs> Listen, when somebody's blown and they can't repent for it, they're on the same path. Amen? As if you and I sin and we're not willing to repent for it, we're going to try and justify our sin, we're in trouble. That's just that cycle of destruction is constantly going to repeat itself. And that's where you have to let go and let God. Verse 5, let's speak it. So also Christ did not glorify himself to become high priest, but it was he who said to him, you are my son, today I have begotten you. And he also says in another place, you are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek, who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with vehement cries and tears to him, who was able to save him from death and was heard because of his godly fear. Why was he heard? Godly fear, 
Though he was a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he what? Suffered. Is mistakes a part of suffering? Is failure a part of suffering? Amen. Verse 9. And having been perfected, he became the author of the eternal salvation to all who obeyed him, called by God as a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek, of whom we have much to say, but hard to explain, since you have become dull of hearing. <laughs> Many people can't comprehend. Now, let me tell you, one of the things the enemy loves to do is cause you to drift so you can't hear. He keeps you so busy in your desires and your wants that you can't hear God. People are so, listen, when you start hearing I, 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 you're in trouble. Now the focus is on you. Amen? Me, myself, and I syndrome. And if you're in the blame game, that means you're in the I syndrome. You're tr trying to protect your demons. 1 John chapter 3. We are growing through it. If you're not willing to grow through it, you won't go through it. You know, when you are really, really willing to grow through it and learn, when, those, when that pattern starts to, even a sense of it starts to develop, you're like, no, can't touch this. Do, 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 right? Oh, no, you know. I ain't going through that again. When those thoughts start coming again, oh, no, you don't. When Mr. and Mrs. Blame show up, no. When the family of fear shows up, no. When Mr. and Mrs. Doubt show up, no. First John chapter 3 and verse 1. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called children of God. Therefore, the world does not know us. I say that again. The world does not know us because it did not know him. They may say they know him, but they really don't. Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. That's the exciting part. Only those that are home know. We're still waiting. But the Word tells us what we shall be. But look at this. But we know that when He is revealed, we shall be like Him. Hallelujah. For we shall see Him as He is. And everyone who has his hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. Whoever commits sin is an idiot. Whoever commits sin also commits what? Lawlessness. And sin is lawlessness. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins. And in him there's what? No sin. Whoever abides in him does not sin. That's simple. Listen, you abide in him because you want to please him. You have a relationship with him. Long distance does not abide. It's like writing letters. Sometimes the mail gets lost. Hello. Is everybody okay? And he who sins is a uh, little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is what? Righteous just as he is righteous. He who sins is of the what? Devil. In other words, he's been influenced by the powers of darkness. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. That's powerful. Whoever has been born of God does not sin, for his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he's been born again. In this, the children of God and the children of the devil are what? Manifested. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. As he is, so we are. As he is, so we are. Amen? And let's close in Philippians 3.
Philippians 3, 7. Hallelujah. For what things we gain to what things were gained to me, these things I count loss for what? Christ. Oh, that is such a powerful scripture. Yet indeed I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ. And be found in him. Wow. And be found where? In him. Not on a street corner. Amen. To be found where? In him. Not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith, that I may what? Know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed to his death. If by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I've already attained or am already perfected. But I do what? I press on. That means I'm growing through it. Amen. That I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I don't count myself to have apprehended but one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching toward the things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let us, as many as are mature, have this mind. And if in anything you think otherwise, God will reveal even this to you. Nevertheless, to the degree that we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us be of the same mind. Brethren, join in following me in my example. And note those who walk as you have for a pattern. For many walk of whom I have told you often, and now I tell you even weeping, that they are enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly or their desire. That's what he means by this. Amen? Because where's the belly associated with hunger, desire? So he said whose God is their desire, because they desire worldly things. Whose glory is their shame, and who set their minds on what? Earthly things. For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body, that it may be conformed to his glorious body, according to the working by which he is able even to subdue all things to himself. Are you willing to grow through it? If you're not, you're not going to go through it. It'll continue to hinder, recycle, until it destroys you. Amen. Lord, we give you glory, honor, and praise, and we thank you for your mercies and grace. We ask that you seal your word, not only with the blood, but with the anointing, so that it can penetrate every part of our being, bring conviction where conviction, bring repentance where uh, repentance, and bring strength so that we may grow through all the it's that come across our life. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Praise God. God bless and stay dressed with the glory.